Aeneas was a demigod who carried his mortal father out from the ruins of the burning city of Troy. Matt Frazier is a full human on the precipice of his third consecutive CrossFit Games title. Thank you, Mike. And Matt Fraser being a full human is actually up for debate as his effort here has been superhuman. He will be in the middle of the floor. The two men who are right now on the podium will be right next to him, Lucas Hogberg and Patrick Velder. And I honestly thought that we were going to have a race this weekend. I'll tell you what, we just didn't. We just didn't. We wondered who was going to really be pushing them, and Vellner was the man. And even though there were issues constantly every single day that Pat had to deal with, he overcame and is sitting in that number two position. But, my goodness, I thought there was going to be a race. I, just like you said, John, I, we thought he was going to be human. We thought we would see some sort of issue, and we didn't. And once he got his momentum, he was, he was gone, absolutely gone. Matt Fraser looking to wrap up his third straight title of fittest man on earth. Lucas Hogberg, meanwhile, trying to finish on the podium at the CrossFit Games for the first time in his career. You know what I've, been, I, what I've loved seeing about Lucas this entire weekend is his face. He has been attacking and fighting and pushing. We saw a couple scuffles even when they were running. He would not let anything go. Never has fallen out of that top three position. And you know what? We got one last, one last deal to go here. Let's see what he can do. Who will join Matt Fraser on the podium? Right now it's Pat Velder and Lucas Holmberg, but Brent Fakowski has a chance to work himself back into a top three spot as we open with five trips up and down the pegboard. And here's the thing, Sean, if you haven't mastered this skill yet, then you have an issue. This is the third time that we've seen the pegboard. So my initial key on this is gonna be you must beat the board. This should not be an issue for the athletes that expect to do well here. But this is not the race. The race is on the yoke carry, and to carry that much weight on your shoulders, you must have a steel core. And I'll tell you what, the guys that have had experience with not just yoke carry work, but heavy yoke carry work are going to have tons of experience, and it's definitely going to pay, play to their favor. And Matt Fraser is sprinting up and down this thing. The time to beat belongs to Frederick Aguinius, 447.32 seconds. So all these athletes need to do is get their pegs below that line, and then they can move their way back up. So Matt Fraser has been nonstop, unbroken so far. Pegs both underneath that red line, and they're both up on the top. I haven't seen him touch the mat since we started. Frazier wow. is done. Look at that. And for the third straight year, the final event is just a victory lap for Matt Fraser. What is so insanely incredible is that you can have an event that really doesn't matter. And you can seriously look at everyone and cruise through this with a smile on your face. How do you do that? Matt Velmer has joined Fraser on the thrusters, as have Cole Sager and Cody Anderson. So Fraser is just really taking some practice swings here. Patrick Velder is ahead of the two men right behind him. That's Lucas Holberg on the left and Brett Krakowski on the right. Now, Sean, the last time that Holberg was in the game and there was a pegboard event, he had a rough time. He finished well towards the bottom, around 30, 30, 30th place. This is a not what he wants. And, and you know what? He was only, he's, right now he's only 34 points behind Belner and only 34 points above Fakowski. So Fakowski has that pegboard. Obviously the prowess, he went through there no problem. But I want to see how Frank is going to be able to handle the weight on those jokes when we get to him. Lucas Hoberg needs to just reel in Brent Fakowski to do some damage control and keep Fakowski from leapfrogging him onto the podium as Matt Fraser continues to crank away on his thrusters. Once he hits that 45 number, he will move on to the yoke, the first one weighing 425 pounds, and I have a sneaky suspicion that that will not be a problem. You know, now the thrusters are really not a big deal for these guys. These are your standings as those final two spots on the podium are the only ones still in contention, and here goes Matt Fraser on his first yoke carry. Cole Sager at the top of the screen. He's really not in contention for a spot on the podium, but would love to beat Fraser here. Now Fraser reloads the yoke, 565. 
Lucas Holmberg is onto the thrusters. He's got to try and reel in Brent Fikowski if he wants to guarantee himself a spot on the podium. So Fikowski is now done, and he'll move to the yoke as Frazier is done with his second of three yoke carries. Now he will load it to 665. And look how fast he's moving through these yokes. It's, he's not even having to prep for it. He throws the weight on, loads and goes. That's so impressive. And now Matt Frazier will take a moment. Final yoke carry for Matt Frazier. Once again, Madtown is Matt's town. For the third straight year, he is the fittest man on earth. And he seals it with his ninth career event win. Cole Sager is across the finish line. Brent Fikowski is on his final yoke carry, and he is well ahead of Lucas Holmberg. Noah Olsen is in. That's Fikowski trying to jump Holmberg to the final spot of the podium. Fikowski ahead of Velder. Velder also ahead of Holmberg, so Velder looking like he's going to wind up on the podium as long as he can get across the finish line. As Fikowski is in. Great job by Brent. I was wondering with his height that that would be an issue, and that was not a problem at all. Velder across. Kowski has finished fourth in the event. Velder will finish seventh. Unofficially, Brent Mikowski has scored 84 points. Lucas Holberg was only up by 34. So Holberg has got to hurry. And remember, we have times from prior heats that are starting to factor in. Holberg on his final yoke carry. Gumitson came in, he finished 12th. And now Holberg is across. Holberg unofficially will take 15th. That, that is 34 points less <laughs> than Fakowski. Wow. Unofficially. Unofficially, they could be tied in points and it will come down to best event finish. Now remember, Holberg earlier today. That's right. That's right. Won an event. That's right. Those two guys battling the entire weekend. Fakowski, his best finish was second in the same event that Holberg won. And this is all unofficial. If it comes down to a tie in points, Holberg should, and I want to emphasize this, should beat Fakowski because of that event win. Meanwhile, Willie Georges, the first man from France to represent his country at the CrossFit Games, is on his first yoke carry, and this kid has been impressive as well. You know, I, I love when we have new faces that don't just come to the game, but show themselves at the game. And the fact that we've been able to see Willie George do his thing yesterday with those two wins, unbelievable job. And he didn't just, like I said, he didn't just come here. He showed up and, man, made a name for himself here at the 2018 Reebok Project Games. Willie really George was sixth overall coming into this event. Cole Sager getting the crowd pumped up for the youngster. Brad Fikowski is as well. What an accomplishment for Willie really George, who last night beat Matt Fraser in two events. Stud. This kid is a stud. Willie really George is in. And with that, the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games have come to a close. For the third consecutive year, your CrossFit Games champion is Matt Frazier!
Frazier is now one step closer to those four straight titles won by Rich Froning from 2011 to 2014. Catherine Davis Otters won two, Annie Forrest Otter and Tia Tumi have also won two, but I think it's a matter of he's going to win as many as he wants. Let's send it down to Mike Arsenault, who is with your three-time CrossFit Games champion. Matt, congratulations. I want to know what was going through your mind during that last event. You were able to do it last year as well. You're looking up to the crowd. You're soaking up the atmosphere. What's running through your head at that moment? Uh, you know, go, going in, you know, there's no minimum work requirement. So, so you know, I wasn't worried about, you know, twisting an ankle and, and not being able to fulfill that. So, you know, I just wanted to send it and go out on a good note. <laughs> you won the final CrossFit Games title in California, and you just put together the two most dominating performances we've seen in CrossFit Games history here in Madison. In your estimation, where do you rank in the list of all-time great athletes in this sport? Uh, you know, I'm not trying to compare myself to other people, you know, they've had their career, I'm having my career, that's, that's it. You mentioned in your Road to the Games episode that your competition persona is a little bit different from your regular persona. You're almost a little bit aloof, just laser focused in competition. Why was it important for you to make that distinction? Uh, you know, it just... I, I know that's probably how I'll be remembered, being very stern, being very serious, not joking very much, but, you know, my family, loved ones that spend time with me outside of the gym, they get to see that, and uh, I hope, I hope with, through some footage that everyone else gets to see that a little bit too. When Dave announced you as the fittest man on earth and then you approached your family and embraced your girlfriend, you were wiping your eyes a little bit, you were getting emotional. What were you thinking about in that moment? Oh, uh, you know, th this this whole journey, you know, training, it, it's not it's not just me. You know, I have my team in my corner. They take everything off my plate that they can so I can wake up, train, and that's it. I, I concern myself with nothing else during the day. And so, you know, it, it means a lot to me to have them here and to share this moment. And it paid off, Matt. Congratulations. Thank you. Matt Fraser is your winner. Now we need to find out if Pat Vellner and Lucas Holberg did enough to keep themselves on the podium. But if you're asking yourself, well, who's the man who might be able to stop Matt Fraser? Maybe, maybe it's Patrick Vellner. <laughs> I, I think if, I would have loved to see what Patrick Vellner's 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games would have looked like if we would have taken some of those little issues out. Race, erase some of those, you change the points a little bit. Um, you know, does he does he sit up there with Matt? I, don't, I can't say that yet. I don't think that he can. Matt is just so dominating. But I was very impressed by Pat. I mean, he's right there. He's knocking on the door. Same thing with Hoberg. Again, we didn't see him last year. He didn't even qualify out of regionals. He wasn't sure what this year was going to look like. And the fact that he was so strong all the way through. I mean, get this kid to finish, you know, and be able to master some of those pegboard ascents and I think he's going to be pretty dangerous as well. Matt Fraser for the third straight year had this thing wrapped up heading in to the final event and as he always does, you heard him say in the interview, he decided to send it and go out in style and he comes up with his ninth career event win. But Patrick Vellner, and you mentioned it, looked like he's closing the gap a little bit. You take away some of those mishaps and maybe he can be Fraser, but it's looking like he will finish in second place here. But and just think about what we, you know, what he had to go through to get to this particular position. We know he had issues with his gearing and his chain coming off his bike and the crit. We saw, as everyone has seen on social media, that fall from grace on the on the cargo net and that massive fall, um, having to go to the hospital, having issues all the time. Just a very rough start, but a very resilient character. And man, testament to how strong this kid is. Meanwhile, we talked about it at the top, nobody predicted him on the podium. No, absolutely not. And that's not taking anything away from Lucas. But when you don't qualify one year, you can't expect to see someone in the third place position, basically the entire competition. Like, that's just not a, that's not a normal position to be in. So, where what he has done, the work he's put in, the, the ability to switch in, in his training, Whatever he's doing, it's working. He needs to continue that. Matt Fraser was just being somebody with some swag. Let's <laughs> send it down to Mike Arsenault, who's with Pat Dollar.
Thank you very much, Sean. I'm here with Patrick Vellner. Patrick, this is your second consecutive appearance on the podium. How does it feel to enjoy this moment of being on the podium here on the competition floor? It's definitely better than the last time, uh, like the way things happened last year. It certainly feels a lot sweeter to earn it here at the time of, so I'm happy. I need to shore up a couple things, and uh, I set a goal this year to try to tighten up that gap between Matt and the rest of the field, and we didn't quite get there this year, but it's a work in progress, and hopefully next year runs a little smoother. How were you able to maintain your focus throughout the week here at the CrossFit Games? You had the issue in event number one. You had the fall on the cargo net. You had to go uh, go off site, get checked out by the medical staff. How do you maintain that focus? I think my background in sports really lends itself to that, and I, I'm an experienced competitor in lots of different things, and I understand things are not won and lost in one go or one event or, or one try at things. So um, it's important that when those things happen, you should try to... I mean, assess it, try to understand what happened and why, and let it make you better, but don't hang on that and uh, let it affect you for too long, because, I mean, we've shown in this sport in particular lots and lots of times that there's a lot of points to be earned over the course of a weekend, and uh, just because you have one hiccup, it doesn't mean the weekend's over. I know you like to th play things pretty close to the vest in terms of how you're feeling during competition, but now that the competition is over, what type of pain were you in after that fall, and how are you feeling right now? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it hurt. It felt pretty high. It hurt pretty bad. But, uh, I mean, at the time, I, I still had some work to do, and I figured I could feel sorry for myself once I hit the white finish line. And, I mean, I you feel it. I, I told everybody, anybody, anybody that's ever played contact sports, I just feel like I got a really, really bad hit. I got my bell rung really hard, and I woke up the next day feeling sore. And that's about all there is to it. Uh, everything got checked through with medical, and there was, they let me compete, and that's the end of the story as far as I'm concerned. Well, it was worth it, worth it for the silver medal. Patrick, congratulations. Thank you very much. Three years at the CrossFit Games and three years on the podium for Pat Velner. Now the question is, which one of these two men will finish in third place? Lucas Hoberg started the event there, but will he finish there for the announcement? Here's Dave Castro. So the final results are in. And in third place, we have a tie. Let's go to second. Give Patrick Vellner a big round of applause for second place. <laughs> Tied for third place is Lucas Hogberg. Come over here. Lucas, Lucas, come to me. We're not done, we're not done. Don't celebrate too soon. Hey, you're not getting interviewed. <laughs> Tied is Brent Fakowski. In CrossFit, in our scoring system, we have a tie-break system for the scoring. And if the scores are tied, we go to the highest placing finish in any single event. Therefore, by that rule, actually, I wish we had him do Fran as a tiebreaker. That would have been better. Should we do that instead? We got to follow the rule book. We got to follow the rule book. By that rule, we go to the event from earlier this morning, two-stroke pool, and Lucas Hoberg won it. Therefore, he is your third place finisher at the CrossFit Games. Now Lucas Hofer can celebrate as he finishes on the podium for the first time in his career. And I was at the Meridian Regional in 2017 when he failed to qualify, and he was devastated. I could not be happier for Lucas Hofer. Right uh, he sprinted from that arena just trying to get out there and contain himself. What an amazing finish by Lucas. Real impressive. Now Lucas Hofer can also do his post-games interview with Mike Arso. <laughs> Lucas, what a story of redemption after not qualifying for the CrossFit Games last year. You're on the podium here in 2018. How does that feel? It's the best feeling I ever felt in my life. It's amazing. So thank you guys for being here. 
Yeah, I don't, I can't explain it, just like the best feeling ever, shit. How did you stay motivated after not qualifying last year and continuing to push over the 12 months so you could ensure they'd be back here at the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games? Well, I did know that I was good enough to be a good games athlete and just, I wanted it so bad so I just been keep on pushing it really, really hard. Well, you're more than good enough to be a games athlete. What does the celebration look look like for Lucas Hogberg and the rest of his team tonight? Uh, well, just go to the hotel, eat some cinnamon buns, and just go to sleep, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy that. Congratulations, Lucas. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Final results after four days of competition and 14 events. Matt Fraser, his third title of Fittest Man on Earth. Patrick Bellner for the third straight time is on the podium. And Lucas Hogberg, courtesy of a tie break, finishes third. I'll tell you what, I'm really, I'm really happy to see that large mass of guys that are hunting Matt down. So, so I like the fact that they haven't let him go. He's having his time, but they're still in the hunt. This is going to make for a great 2019. Matt Fraser, the three-time fittest man on earth. Thanks for being here with us, everybody. We will see you in 2019.